Hello and welcome back to the Immaculate Confection Studio for part two of our Easter series. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these gorgeous little violets and pansies. Give us a like and a subscribe, check out our website for all our products and colours, you'll find the links in the description. Right, let me take these apart. So look, we've got so a bigger pansy, which way around, that way around. Like so, and then just these wee little, um, I'll take them out their egg. Actually, it's the same egg. I have not yet prepared same another egg. egg. Prepared the other egg no, yeah. I haven't. Um, here we are. So yeah, there's a few different ones. And let me grab a bit of this. So we're looking at it on something that's not bright pink, because that's always a bother. And what I've done is, um, so this whole thing is going to be white and purple, I've decided. Um, obviously these are a deeper purple than what the lilacs are, a little bit, and of course we can bring in some white. So I'll show you a few different colours, but once you've got the, the, the basics of how they, um, they go together, um, then you can do what you want. There's so many different colours, and of course lots of them have yellow, and have yellow, a little bit of yellow dusting in the middle, but I didn't go for that because I just wanted to keep it white and purple. Um... But we will we will need some green, so maybe next week we'll do some uh, some greeny bits. What am I putting where? Right. <laughs> okay. As you can see, my brain is not entirely functioning just this evening. So we'll see. We will see how this all pans out. Um, right. So we want some little cutters, and you just want little petals basically. So they are, each one wants a couple of petals go at the top, a couple of petals that go at the side, and then one petal that goes at the bottom like that. Um, so there's only five, and for the larger one, I've got this heart, and I'm just using this um, this one here for the single petals. And then for the smaller one, I'm using this and just sort of cutting a heart. So I will give you guys the measurements on those, just so that you've got a vague idea there. So the heart is, let's have a look, it's about two centimetres across. And those little petals are just shy of two centimetres as well. And then these ones here are about one centimetre. But to be honest, you could use whatever you've got. So don't sweat it if you've got different sizes. I just thought I would would let you know with those. Um, so we're going to use those. We're going to use a veining stick. And otherwise, it's just normal bits and pieces. And we're going to work in white. And I am, of course, using our flower paste. Uh, maybe a little bit more than that. So for the um, all of these, they're wired on 28 gauge, which was fine. For these little diddy ones, they're such small petals. If you should have any 30 gauge, then you can um, you can totally go for that. Chris, do you want to pop in the comments to say about just refresh the page or whatever? Because as far as things are oh, concerned, yeah, yeah, at this yeah. end, it's all right, isn't it? Gee, right, I can see it. Um. <clears throat> So let me move those out of the way and we'll get going. That should probably do us. So if we do a big one, I shall cut one of those and four of these. Um, and then I'm just going to grab a petal portfolio to put them in so they don't all dry. And then I'll cut a couple of these. And I won't necessarily make whole ones, but I'll show you how to do each different bit of colouring. But we'll just do a petal or two for each one rather than the whole thing, if that makes sense. Right. Um, 
so that's us cut and then here if I can get this out of the cutter I am just going to separate my petals into single ones <clears throat> like so And then we're just going to use our veining stick. Oh, actually, before we do that, we're just going to cut a little notch. So if you've got a little heart cutter, the right sort of size for this, that sort of matches up, you can totally use that. But if not, you can just use a cutting wheel to cut a little notch and make a little heart shape there. And we're just going to use our veining stick to just widen everything a bit and add those veins. If you find you're sticking, go for a bit of corn flour. And don't sweat it too much. This is not a, you don't need to be too precise about it. And then once you've got those, pop them on your petal pad. And we're just going to use a smallish, I'd say this one, ball tool to just run around the edge because we want a bit of shape of it, but we don't want to make it too, too frilly. Like so. And actually, they can wait a bit. They want wires put in on, but that doesn't have to happen straight away. We can do that in just a minute. Um, and I do, in fact, right, what I'm going to do is prep this one as well just so that I've got enough to show you all the petals and then I'm going to steal one or two of these because uh, I broke some earlier so I shall steal a couple of these petals to go with the ones that I broke and then I've got another little one there that I can sort of throw into the mix when we um, finish them all quite small and fiddly these so we'll get these little ones out of the way and then we'll do the bigger ones, which will be considerably easier. There are some lovely um, pink pansies that are a beautiful dusky rose sort of shade of pink. Gorgeous things. Um, and with all the detailing and stuff and the like the little faces. And they're quite hardy, aren't they, pansies? I think. I'll take a word for that. To be honest, I was asking more than anything, because <laughs> I know that these guys will know. They definitely know more than you and me, that's for sure. There you go, so just round those edges with the ball tool just to soften it off. Like so. Um, and then we'll do our slightly larger one. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a good point. So, yeah, we've got, um, we will put these. So we've got a few videos up on the, on our YouTube channel. And we're sort of doing a mixture. Doing what you're doing and talk about it do you want me to? No, no, just because obviously I want to do this bit out. But if you... Oh, see Stop what you mean. That working on the flower, that would help. Okay. <clears throat> she says carry on traveling around. Well, I'm not talking about it though, am I? Oh, okay. I'll do it in a minute. Okay. Now you can get winter pansies, which are very hardy. Right. So we're going to do some little twiddles. <clears throat> so we want to just wet the end of our wire and just you don't want it too wet little sausage of paste and we're just going to just make a wee little twiddle it just needs to be a small one because there are only small things there 
Um, so I'll do these for uh, the big ones. So these are 28 gauge wires that I'm using here. For the little tiny pansies, so these ones that I did earlier on 28s, but actually I think that it would probably work really well on 30 gauge as well, if you happen to have some. If you don't, then it's absolutely fine. Go for the 28, that's what I did earlier. It's what I use for, for most things, it's just they are very small. Um, so let's do these. Do the fifth one. There they are. And then what I'll do is, because I need to make some more of these, but you can swap the camera and we can yak on about some other things afterwards. Oh, am I going to tell you which one, which one I meant? Um, what was Chris? Keep googling them then. <laughs> this this one? It might be. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the thing I'm not sure you know. Well, just because of how that creeps over the wall. So with our little twiddles, we'll just pop a spot of water on there. We'll take our petal, pop it on, and we're just going to press it down. What's that one? Flocks. No, not flocks. That looks a bit like a periwinkle a or a petunia. <clears throat> <laughs> I think it's that. Yeah. What was the other? What was was it? The lub lub lubelia, lubelia, lobotomy, the Something. lobotomy. I don't know. The, the, yeah, I think that one. It probably won't happen, but I've got this notion. Like, so our garden, I know I've said this to you guys before, our garden is an, like, it's a swamp. It is actually a swamp. Um, and every time it rains, it becomes a lake. And then as the water recedes, it goes back to swamp. Um, we're expecting Shrek to arrive any day now. Um, but no, once it's done, there's going to end up being these like um, raised beds. And I've notions that doing it in all the plants in white and purple would be really pretty. Um, but it probably won't happen. And I'll probably kill everything. Right, right. Hang on. This is the last one. Sorry, I totally should have made some of these earlier, but then. But what I are just, you doing? Anyway, I'm just attaching the petals to the twiddles so that they are ready to be dusted and used. Right, and so this is where Natalie gets to try and remember how she did this earlier on today. Much like last week, we have a core of pure purple and violet pink for our colours. Very purple and very violet pink. Oh yeah, are you hungry? Did you have any pre-show pre pre-show cheese? I'm I'm not even gonna <laughs> respond to that. Um, and I've got my corn flour just so that I can water us down a little bit as and where needed. Uh, so if we go for this dark one first. Just there. So that is um, this sort of pure purple and the indigo purple. So we'll do. So you can let these dry a bit before you you dust them. I'm being fairly keen about it. Um, and we want to bring the colour in from the top down, like so. So that we've got just that little whitey bit exposed at the bottom or at the, the point of the petal. No, what do I mean? The base. Like so. And as always, it is the repetitive little brush strokes that are the key to getting those nicely blended colours. And a nice smooth gradient with that little white bit at the bottom. What do the comments say, Chris? Because I can't dust and read at the same time. Oh, there's nothing there. Thank you, anyone. Really no, yeah. no, just literally I can't read and see at the same time. Right, and then we've got the little heart-shaped one. Same deal. From the edge towards the middle, but leaving there white bit and you can see it is the key is absolutely those repetitive brush strokes so that's one set of colors just there I do need one more twiddle there's one that I forgot 
Um, so I've got some petals like this left over from earlier. Um, that one was pure purple and indigo purple. So it's sort of this, this super deep rich. It comes out almost navy blue, but because we're doing it with the purple, um, it's quite a warm tone of navy blue, which is what we want for that. Um, right, so I shall do... I'm going to do some here that are just purple. So I'm going to take some cornflower, a bit of pure purple, like so. And then this, we're sort of doing the reverse. We're just doing the middle bit. So it's just a little bit of colour up the centre. <coughs> and you know what, in truth, this is probably coming up because of what I just had on the brush with a bluer purple than I wanted. But never mind, there's all sorts of different pansies and violas and everything. Um, Cheryl, no, we're not from Cambridgeshire. So we were born in Hertfordshire and that's where we lived most. Because <coughs> oh. I was talking about the St. Hugh's <coughs> eggs. Oh. Um, which are from Ely, I think, because they have a nice navy blue um, box. <laughs> this, this is this the the small round. So not the extra small, just the normal small round one. Um, yeah, born born and bred in Hertfordshire. We've skipped across the border into a village um, in Essex, but we are um, we're what we're about forty minutes from Cambridge. Yeah, I guess. So a little bit further from Ely. And actually, we're going to go visit Cambridge soon, aren't we? And I hope they can yeah. fix a camera. Um, ah, Mary, <laughs> she can never win with a fiery redhead. God help him, but my mother's Greek as well, so he stands no chance whatsoever. <laughs> actually, that's not true, is it? I was about to say, you'd like to find out. Keep <laughs> <Yeah, he's> going. <laughs> um, do you know what? It probably won't surprise any of you to know that Chris is one of those gents that he's like he's lovely. He's lovely all the time. There's no two ways about that. He's grand till he goes past his point, and when he gets angry, he gets very angry. And depending on where it's directed, it can be quite funny, isn't it? Sometimes, like that time at Cake and Snack. Can we move Yes, we can. Um, right. So let's see. We've done that, which is will be this one that's our navy bluish one so we'll do this more um kind of true purple colored one so for that we're doing some pure purple and some violet pink sort of mixing the two together and we're going to come in from the edges but we want more white exposed than what we did with that sort of navyish one before before Something like that and honestly guys you can have such a play with these because there's ones as well where they've got two purple petals one white one and then the one at the bottom is sort of a mixture sorry two white two purple and the ones at the bottom is a bit of a mixture like you know you really can play around with them And just super 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 repetitive brush strokes so that you're getting a real nice build up of colour on the edge and then that nice blend and gradient like so okay <coughs> just one more then we'll do a little bit of painting. There we go. Um, let's see. And then the only other one I did really was this one where it's just, I mean, it's more of the same really. It's that, but just is just a one one example petal for you just lots more of it so you really can just go to town play with the colors and i think as long as you're sort of basing them off of these ones you're going to hit the right sort of tones to, to sit alongside those lilacs and give us that kind of white and purple 
um, situation that we wanted. So what we can do as well, so because these haven't dried um, just yet, because we've only just made them, which is grand. What I can do, can you see how having um, dusted them, you end up making everything a bit flat again, just which is just from the brush really. Because there's still some movement in them, we can pop them back on our petal pad and just go over just once or twice with the ball tool. And you don't want to press too hard or anything, you're just putting back the frill that was there before. <coughs> like so. And it will do this to your petal pad, but remember, you can wash them in the sink with a sponge. Um, the mess is only ever really sitting on the surface, so you can just go over with a like a baby wipe or something. Um, find your words. Or you can just put them straight in the dishwasher. Um, the only thing if you put them in the dishwasher is they do take a little while to dry. Um, oh, that one's very solid. That, that was clearly a... And here's one I made earlier. <laughs> Poor thing. Um, oh, so's that one. It's all right. I've got a spare one here. I told you, Chris. <sighs> Why are you laughing? What's so funny? Oh, this one's going to be fun to do. And then last but by no means least, I'm just going to go around these ones with a ball tool again as well. Yeah. Is that alright? So yeah, it's just a little bit to make sure that they've got a bit of shape in them. Um, now to tape them together, we are just going to go for some quarter width Nile green. So I've got some from what I was using earlier, so it's nice and thin. Um, and remember the pattern that we're going for, like the shape. So I'll start with one which will go at the back. So I'll get the tape attached to that. And he wants another one to sit next to him. And you're kind of going to go a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left, like so. And then we're going to pop the other two on. So we'll bend one to the right wrap that round and one to the left, wrap that round like so and then last but not least they're a bit of a strange because of this petal uh. here so what we can actually do is bend all of those back a bit this one you're just going to put you see the angle in the wire there so that he'll come right on the front like that and we will wrap that wire around and then after they're taped we'll paint them um, and I shall explain why in just a moment but we can bring those round like so and just arrange them so that they're sitting in a a pleasing and, and pansy or violet like position. So that's one of them. I'll do, I'll do this big one next. So again, attach for the back, a little to the right or the left, even, either way. That one goes a little the other way, and we'll pop them together. Like so, and you can totally let yours dry a bit longer. We'll make this easier. Don't let them go too dry, um, because they just become a little bit awkward. As always, a bit of flexibility in them will stop them from breaking. But you can definitely let them be a little bit more dry than this. So let's get those arranged. 
so you can see where this is going and then we'll pop again bend him all the way back so that he can go right at the front very careful with how we wrap that so that we're not catching those petals and destroying them you can make as many pansies as you like Victoria um, We've got, I think when we come to do the, the final session where we put together the eggs and stuff, I reckon we'll do a couple of different options. So you can go for as many as you fancy um, and then we'll see sort of what display ideas we, we come up with in the end uh, when we put them together. Right, let's take this last little one. Because yeah, I haven't really decided yet is the answer to that. I got as far as, as the egg last week and we, we I recycled that egg for this week and that's about it. So there's my two at the back. See that this one's dry. It's way easier because it doesn't move on the stem. So this falls into a bit of a do what I say rather than what I do category of, of letting things actually dry. Just make your life easier. There we go, and then again, that last one, <coughs> he bends all the way back. So that comes on the front, and just make sure, so they don't have a centre. And if you look at pictures, or indeed if you've got any real ones you can look at, you'll see they don't really, they don't have a middle, they just sort of have a hole, rather than, um, you know, a centre with, with visible stamens and whatnot in it. So which is why I haven't made a middle, but do make sure that they that the petals are nice and tight with each other in the middle. Um, right, so we're going to mix up a little bit of paint. So I've got a few drops of Rejuvenator in there. So Rejuvenator is just a high percentage alcohol. You can also use a vodka or a gin, and I'm just adding just sort of two brushfuls of glaze um, which is what's in this here so confectioner's glaze and that's just because it's going to sort of set the dust for us um, so it doesn't come off again we'll take some pure purple mix that in and I'm going to take some of my plum purple as well because we want quite a dark colour So you've got nice liquidy paint, but it's also quite dark. It's not like it's fairly opaque, which is what we want. And then I've got one of our uh, triple zero brushes. So you can see it's really fine, really, really, really fine. Um, now, the reason that I paint them when they're together is just so that you can kind of see how the whole thing works as a whole and how those petals interact with each other. So the top two petals don't have anything on them. The side ones <coughs> want a few lines coming out like so. Something like this. And then, of course, let's see if I can get the position, a few lines spreading out down to the bottom. So I always find this a challenge because normally I would have these, like, I'd have my glasses off and I'd have this right up after my nose. one there and if you want it to be a bit darker you can pop some more on top or just mix some more dust in with your paint so that you get a darker shade we'll do the same here so again not those top two it's the ones at the side Like 
so sorry i'll hold these so that you guys can see the pattern it's just it's really awkward for me to get my hands in the right position and be able to see them right and then here And there are, there's so many different patterns that you can follow. And then I'm just putting that dark in the middle as well, just sort of painting the center. <coughs> and then finally, we've got our little navy bluish one. So maybe for this one, I'll just do sort of, maybe just two or three lines on each side. and just a few down here and again that middle yeah and you can look up like find some pictures on good old google for patterns to follow this and apologies for me waffling i can't paint and talk but we know this don't we doing all right and there we go some very cute little pansies <laughs> with violas. So I hope you enjoyed making those lovely little pansies and violets there. They're really cute and I do love the colourings. They're just perfect for Easter. Um, you can check out the lilacs we made last time in the first video and don't forget to check back for the next part in this series where we're going to make some really nice little crocuses. We'll see you again then.